Let's go into the Monday Nighter. We'll be live for this as well right here. 8.15 p.m. Eastern, New Orleans Saints, 4-8, 1-4 and one and on the road at Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 5-6, 3-3 and six, three and three at home. We're at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Start with the line history in this one. We have these Buccaneers opening up at minus 6. They've already gone down to minus 4. That two-point move, well, I mean, it's the juice moved very quickly here with the Saints. The Saints opened up minus, plus 6, minus 110. They got up to plus 6 at minus 141. So, But now we're sitting at 4. The total opened up at 40 to pick them. It's not moved. So we're still sitting with that same total. From a cash flow standpoint, they've given the New Orleans Saints line value here a little over – little over 33, maybe 40% line value. 3,700 tickets in, 65% of the tickets, 84% of the cash on the Saints. You have 80% of the tickets on the under. Saints come in off being shut out for the first time in 21 years. 13-0 at San Francisco. Dalton 18-29 for 204 yards. No touchdowns, no picks. Their run game was completely shut down. As a team, they rushed for 20, 22 times for 63 yards. Kamara ran 17 times for 13 yards. Did catch six passes for 37 yards, but he fumbled twice. Olave caught five passes for 62 yards. Rahid Shahid caught two for 53 yards. Their defense kept them in the game, held the Niners to just 317 total yards. Got a sack and four quarterback hits. Quarterback P.J. Williams hurt his knee in the first half. There's been no update. Marcus Davenport and Cameron Jordan both played through their injuries. Uh, Lattimore, Werner, and Ryan Ramchick missed the Niners game. And we'll have to wait to see. It should be around the right time for Lattimore to return. Uh, but we don't know about Werner or, or Ramchick, but Werner's not been put on IR. Saints' average turnover margin is negative 1.2. Like, that is horrific. And they were... We we should have cashed. Uh, those of us that were on the Saints uh, should have cashed. And I wasn't on the Saints, but I was in my pools. I didn't bet the Saints, but... Buccaneers coming off an ugly 23-17 loss at Cleveland. We cashed the under comfortably. The offense continues to sputter. I would have been on the Buccaneers, but I saw the sharp action on the Browns and it just kept me off of it. Tampa did not score a point on their final seven possessions. Brady was 29 of 43 for 246 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Godwin had 12 for 110 yards and a touchdown. Rashad White had 14 carries for 64 yards, added nine catches. <coughs> Excuse me, for 45 yards. This offense has weapons. And Brady's a quarterback, and they're terrible. It's hard to figure out. They finished just 4-15 on third down. Uh, Press Nectal says, are the Saints running fades to Taysom Hill in the end zone this week again? It's been tough. I don't, I don't hate it. Tough. It's been tough for Preston. It's been tough. But back to the Bucs. Their defense was strong. Four sacks, 11 quarterback hits. Mike Edwards had a pick. Held Cleveland to 5-17 on third down. Right tackle Tristan Wirfs was carted off the field. In overtime, leg injury it looked serious, but they got lucky. His knee is fine. It's an ankle issue, and he's going to be out three to four weeks. they got to figure something out at right tackle. So it looks like Josh Wells will come in. It's such a banged-up offensive line to begin with. I mean, think about it from the start of the year. They lost two interior linemen to free agency. They lost Ali Marpet to retirement. They lose Ryan Jensen with a knee injury during training camp. They lose Aaron Stinney in preseason. Uh, now, Robert Hainsey, second-year center, has looked better. He's gotten better. Uh, but uh, they're they're in big trouble in the offensive line. But I don't know. Can you back the Saints here? The Saints are a very – the Saints are another team that's I've cost me a ton of cash this year. Take it away for us, Andy. The Monday yeah. Nighter. Saints. Yeah, Buccaneers. Tampa Tampa Bay's defense has been worse than, and obviously because of injuries, worse than expected, worse than average against the run, slightly slightly above average against the pass as far as just if you go off whatever a few different metrics, drop back EPA per play. They've been a big disappointment just in general, I suppose. Maybe both of these teams has. And it's weird because the Saints, you look at some of these box scores, you look at some of these final scores, and they really have some weird outcomes. But at the same time, if you look at just, if you isolate Andy Dalton's performance, he's been kind of good. He's been efficient. I know he had the game where he threw like two pick sixes in four seconds, but outside of some of those big mistakes, he's been quietly efficient. And they can they can hang with this Tampa Bay defense. Um, 
I kind of like the Saints here. I haven't played this one, but Tampa Bay is beat up all over the place, and the offense is very disconjointed. They gave up. I mean, obviously, you're going to give up big runs to, you know, the Browns. That's what they do. But, you know, right now, I don't have these teams that different. You know, I, I think Tampa Bay probably is this is about the line where it should be. If we see some steam and this gets out to a four, four and a half, once we get out to, you know, Sunday, I'm probably going to be taking some Saints. Like, no, no move for me now, but I'm leaning towards the Saints. And, yeah, like you said, the Saints defense really maybe not getting a ton of credit because you look at that and be like, man, they got shut out. They looked like shit. They were a bad team. I mean, they did a lot. They did a lot of work. It's uh, They should get together on a conference call with the Broncos defense and maybe sympathize a little like, hey, we're working our ass off here and the offense didn't score because that's that's kind of what we had there. They really kept them in the game. And, you know, the Saints had some bad luck, a weird fumble. They had the, you know, a Melvin Gordon-esque fumble right at the right at the goal line. So it's it's not as bad of a team as they, they put out on paper or, you know, it's kind of the perception of this team. So I think this should be three, three and a half. I'm fine with this number, but I do lean towards the Saints keeping this close because I'm not sure how much I need to downgrade Tampa continually based off the injuries and how the run defense has looked. Why are we not betting this under like Sky Dragon is? Danny Lopez is. Why are we not on the under right now at 40? Yeah. That's a hell of a question. I think I'm just maybe a little bit prisoner of the moment for how the Saints weren't able to score last week, but this is a massive step down. You're going from a very, very good defense to a middle of the pack to maybe below average defense, especially when it comes to running the ball. Saints are going to probably be able to extend drives by running the ball here. I think the Saints offense moves. I, I think this total is fine. If it continues to drop, you'll see, you'll probably see some, you know, some buyback on this over. But I'd like to yeah, have, some I, I don't hate it. It'd be an under or nothing for me. I'm not betting this over. I w- Even if this got down another point, I have no interest in betting this over, but it's, it's close enough where I don't think there's a huge edge. I would like to be involved in the under before we pop off on Monday night. So I'm going to bet this under uh, tonight. I, I'd like to have some action on it. Uh, Not Plachon says, do we think this over gets up a little higher before kickoff with some buyback? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't see that it's moved. No, know? that's right. But <laughs> that's the thing, too. When I think a number's fine and then the market just kind of leaves it alone as well, it just it leads me to more of, hey, you were right in the first place. This number's fine. I'm going to move on it, and then we will live bet the shit out of it yes, here sir. on Monday night. 